which I referenced earlier in the book, but the entire contents of it is here in Appendix H. California, where, where, what state? What state are we? California. <laughs> California legislation relative to Pluto's planetary stack, status. <laughs> California Assembly Bill. <laughs> was an H.R. 56 relative to Pluto's planetary status introduced by assembly members uh, uh, Keith Rick, uh, Richmond, MD, Republican, District 38, and uh, Joseph Kenchiamila, a Democrat, District 11. So it's bipartisan <laughs> legislation here. <laughs> whereas, it's got all the whereas speak, so you know it's real. Whereas, recent astronomical discoveries, including, including Pluto's oblong orbit, and the sighting of a slightly larger Kuiper Belt object have led astronomers to question the planetary status of Pluto. Fine, a little bit of science there. Whereas, mean-spirited scientists decided to disrespect Pluto by stripping Pluto of its planetary status and reclassify the low this year of tax money at work. <laughs> the Roman god of the underworld, and affectionately sharing the name of California's most famous animated dog, <laughs> have special connection to California history and culture. <laughs> I don't mean to like get on your case here, but if an animated dog is a fundamental part of your history and culture, I, I, I don't know what that means. So on and on. And my favorite one here, and I'll, I'll end on this. Uh, no, I can't. I should. I. You no, know, I, I can't. Go ahead. Go for it. Can't not. See, if I don't read it, then it, like you'll have to buy the book, right? So, <laughs> there's, there's there's method here. So. All right. All right. Fine. <laughs> Whereas the downgrading of Pluto reduces the number of planets available for legislative leaders to hide redistricting regis legislation <laughs> and other inconvenient political reform measures, and kind of resolved by the Assembly of the State of California that the Assembly hereby condemns the International uh, uh, Economical Union's decision to strip Pluto of its planet status and for its tremendous impact on the people of California and the state's long-term fiscal health. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, it's all here. It's, it's all here. Pluto. Well, though Southern California... <laughs> Disneyland is Southern California. That's right, I forgot. <laughs> Pluto. That's all the book is. So, to uh, remind the radio audience that you're listening to the Commonwealth Club of California radio program. We're talking with Hayden Planetarium Director Neil deGrasse Tyson about Pluto and other things extraterrestrial. I'm uh, going to begin the questioning just by saying, Dr. Tyson, isn't it true that ten years ago, in another book that you wrote, you came out in favor of Pluto retaining its planetary status? Let me explain. <laughs> uh, some years ago, uh, I, I wrote a book called Merlin's Tour of the Universe, written entirely in the pen name of Merlin. So in fact, it was Merlin who made that decision. <laughs> uh, no, that was at a time, Merlin is a different character, it's a Q&A book on the universe, real questions from the real public. Uh, it was my very first book, actually. It's, I'm happy to say it's still in print. And if you're really a science newbie, then that, that book is for you. It'll take you right from, handheld, handhold you right through the beginning of our understanding of the cosmos. And in there, uh, I got asked, what is Pluto? How, does, how do you feel about Pluto? And Merlin replied, well, Pluto's got a moon, you know? And if you got a moon, well, sure, you got to be a planet. That was, of course, before the first Kuiper Belt object was discovered. Had that information been available, Merlin may have given a different answer. But I still claim that I'm not responsible because that was a pen name and not 
<laughs> By the way, I want to remind the audience that in sort of a departure from what we usually do at Commonwealth Club, we've got microphones throughout the audience on either side of the aisle, so if you do want to step up and if you have a question, we welcome you to do that. We're also relying on the usual cards that we get from the audience. Um, let me just ask you though. I answer the question better when I stand. Did you go on to that? Do you remember you sit seated? I feel like I should be listening to somebody else. If We're I'm here for you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Whatever yeah. makes you comfortable. Good. I do have to ask you that the morning that you went to the bottom fold of the New York Times and saw that New York had apparently single-handedly changed the designation of Pluto, did you get a call from your boss? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, the provost of the American Museum of Natural History, the highest ranking academic officer, called me that day. And, and I was relatively young and newly hired at the institution, and the institution cares about its reputation, doesn't want to get the science wrong or bad, because that would disrupt its long-earned, well-earned reputation. He said, Neil, what have you done? <laughs> Did you do this alone? What if, and no, actually, I had a committee of my colleagues, and we got together, so first it was not alone. Second, I said, no, it's just where it's got to go. It's what it's got to be. And he didn't believe. He called other professionals in the field, one of whom was an astrophysicist and provost at Princeton University. <laughs> His name is Jerry Ice Ostreicher, highly decorated astrophysicist, who also happens to know me because I postdoc at Princeton, okay? So, called him and said, what, what do we make of this? And he said, whatever, ne whatever Neil says, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> for the administration to accept this because we're being raked over the coals. But then, six years later, the international community votes in our favor. And four years later, when the biggest, when a bigger object was found than Pluto, the New York Times ran a editorial saying, maybe we should rethink the Pluto situation. <laughs> they said, uh, four years ago, the Hayden Planetarium created quite a stir. I'm thinking, no, we didn't. You did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so they acquiesced four years after this, and then the vote was two years later when the professional community voted in favor of something being done with Pluto. So we were basically right all along. And I don't want to claim special deep cosmic insight here. We were just about to spend $200 million. If you're going to do that, you're going to do your homework. And we had the occasion to do our homework before anybody else did, and that's really all that went on there. If this planetary broke off, finally, August 2006, the IAU said, well, you know what, okay, Pluto's not a planet. Well, I was so angry with all the bad publicity. Was, I felt like, why don't I just go along with it and say, yeah, we kicked Pluto out. Too small to make it in New York. You know? I felt like, give me something to argue about. <laughs> Get me started. <laughs> Let's take a question from the audience, the lady on the line on the deck. Yes. Um, a while back, I read Thomas Kuhn's Nature of Scientific Revolutions, I think mm -hmm. it was called. The Structure of Scientific structure Revolutions. Of scientific revolutions. And it, your experience with Pluto seemed very common to a, a lot of things that other scientists have gone through. And I was just wondering if um, you kind of can expound on that at all, if you think this is a... Uh, you know, an experience like what happened when we figured out that electricity wasn't a fluid or something like that. Okay, so the book she's referring to is a highly influential book on the philosophy of science and the history of science. Uh, it's written by a physicist turned philosopher, uh, Thomas Kuhn, highly influential, and it's what really brought the word paradigm into common parlance, where you have a scientific paradigm, where every kind of, everybody kind of believes something because that's the right thing to believe at the time. And then some new data comes along and then you got to go, oh, believe this. Now, it's been widely misunderstood and misinterpreted to think that scientists just sort of have a temporary truth that they sort of hang out with. Okay, we're done with that, now let's go hang out with this truth, as though there's no convergence, and it's just false. Not only that, there are great discoveries that are not, that don't undermine what was known before. There are plenty of discoveries that, did, that no one knew anything about. And so you didn't have to rethink something that happened before. Whereas if you only took your science understanding from that book, you would think we're always in the process of an upheaval of a paradigm that we were clutching to with our, with our nails. So with Pluto, here's how you need to think about it. Not that Pluto used to be a planet, now it's not. That's the wrong attitude. And you have that attitude because you learned it as a memorization of a sequence of names. 